Hey, thanks for joining me at Frank's DIY and Homeowner Help. Today, we're going to do a pretty easy job. Have I said that before? It hasn't worked out. Well, this should be easy. This is just reinstalling this smoke alarm carbon monoxide detector system. So here's the old one. Again, I live, been living in this house for six months. It's a new build or a, a rebuild. And it has these hardwired smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. These are pretty high-end units. They're, they call them a three-in-one. It's got an LED light uh, that strobes for those that are hearing impaired or hard of hearing. And uh, it's got an audible warning too. It'll yell at you and tell you whether it's smoke or carbon monoxide or, or fire type of thing. So that's kind of neat, although I don't really think you need that. But um, it's, uh, it's also a 10-year a ten battery. So it's got a built-in battery backup. So these are hardwired to your, volt, your house's uh, electrical system, 120 volts. But it also has a 10-year sealed battery. So in theory, you should be able to put these in and not touch them for 10 years. And that's really the gold standard for smoke and uh, carbon monoxide detection now. It used to be that you'd put one of those square 6-volt batteries in or whatever they are. And uh, you'd have to change them twice a year. You're supposed to change them twice a year. Now you can put one of these guys in and supposedly not touch them for 10 years. Here's the problem. Well, they fail, right? So I woke up, uh, or didn't wake up, at, in the middle of the night, um, one night last week, this guy started beeping. Just a beep every 30 or so seconds, telling you that, uh, that there's a problem with it, right? So I went up, there's not really much you can do to maintain these. All you can do really is disconnect it. So I disconnect it, let it sit for a little bit, plug it back in, and it seemed to be fine. Then exactly 24 hours later, it started beeping again. So I disconnected it, brought, and when I disconnected it, then it gave me like a false smoke alarm, false carbon monoxide, started yelling at me in English, Spanish, French, you name it. It had definitely failed, right? So I contacted Kita up. I think that's how you pronounce the name here. Just connected them on, or I connected to them online to their customer service, and I, I sent them the uh, serial number of this unit, because the serial number tells you uh, when it was manufactured, right? So if you ever do have a warranty issue with these, you just find the serial number. It's on here somewhere. It tells you the date of manufacture, and, um, and you, send, uh, you don't send it in. You send them an email about it. They got back to me within a day, and they sent the replacement unit via UPS within another day. So within three days, I had this brand new replacement unit. All I should need to do with this thing is unbox it, connect it electrically, and then screw it back into the receptacle that's already installed. So if that's the case, we should have no problem with this install, and I should uh, be able to live on happily ever after for another 10 years with this unit. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so as you would expect, it comes with this base here, but I don't need this because I already have a base installed, right? So I'll put that aside. This says uh, right off the bat to pull this thing off, so I guess this is just a dust protector. And you know what? I'm going to look at all my alarms around the house because I think a couple of these are still actually installed. And this might be uh, like an inlet for uh, smoke detection or carbon monoxide or whatever. So I'll go around and make sure they're all... Uh, you can see it comes with a pretty extensive manual here. And you know what's funny about the manual is there's no instructions on how to actually turn the darn thing on. <laughs> it's kind of interesting because these come switched off. You see this? You have to flip that switch over to the on position for it to work. So we're going to do that. I'm going to try and just do it with a uh, uh, slotted screwdriver here and see if it works easily. You might have to push it in or something, but let's see if uh, it'll play nice. Oh yeah. English language selected. Pour français, appuyez deux fois sur le bouton. 
pour François appuyer deux fois sur le bouton. So if you want French, you push this button twice. So I don't want French, I'd like it in English. Although I would take Spanish if they had that option. But uh, So let's just give it a test here now. So you push it in once and you hear that tone. Testing. This is very loud. Press now to cancel test. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. So the test is test complete, complete, as you hear, as you heard, and this thing is ready to install. Now, neat thing about this too is you saw that little green light. It has a, a green light that runs constantly, or it flashes every now and then. And this thing can sense day-night cycles in light. So if, as long as you have it out in a bright place, it'll dim its own uh, circuitry so that it won't. Uh, the lights won't be too bright. I mean, you still see them at night, but it's not too bad. So let's go upstairs and install it now, and hopefully we're done with this. This is where it's going to go, and you can see it's kind of at the top of the landing of the stairs here. And uh, they've changed the code a lot in the last few years. It used to be it used to have one alarm per house, then it became one alarm per floor. Now it's one alarm per floor, one alarm in front of every sleeping area. So you see another one over here. And then one in every sleeping area too, so in every bedroom. So, so with these things, more or less in Canadian dollars, costing 200 bucks a pop, you know, you're talking a thousand bucks worth of smoke alarms, which is certainly worth it if it saves your life. So make the investment. Okay, so this is it. You can see that hopefully all we need to do for this installation is connect the uh, wire even though this does have a backup 10 year battery, it works without, without it. But once you connect it, you a nice little clip there, it's in there nice and firm. Once you connect it, now this alarm is connected to all the smoke alarms in the house. So if one goes, they all go off, which I think is brilliant. So now this should just fit right in there and you should just line up the tabs and give it a, a half a twist like that. There we go. And that's it. Green light is on. You can test it again if you want. Testing. This is very loud. <laughs> I love that. Uh, this time I'm going to cancel it. Although, my son is still asleep. I should just uh, let it run to wake him up, see if it actually works. So that's it. Um, alarm installed. Hopefully, it doesn't give me any more grief. And, uh, I mean, I would recommend the product, although I'm replacing it. They, you know, stuff is always going to happen. My measure of the value of somebody's worth and a company's worth is how they handle the problems that come along. And they handled it really well. No questions asked. Sent me a replacement via UPS. Didn't have to spend another 200 bucks. Quick install, and we're back to being safe. So thanks for joining me.